coordinate contingency plans to prevent COVID-19 infections. And the Honorable ABC joins me in studio. Good evening, ABC, and welcome to Rise FM. Now, ABC, one of the key projects that you touched on in the budget speech is the Ngosi City that took nine years before it could be approved. What are the social economic benefits for Umpagati Wasifina through the Ngosi City? Well, thanks for the opportunity. Ngosi City is an integrated human settlement mm -hmm. and another city. The benefits of locals will be that they are going to participate in the overall value chain of construction mm -hmm. and the value chain of the agriculture and other communities. In this way, we are going to, in the province, cabinet has resolved in what we call social enterprise development, meaning that government and private sector must source people, must source um, uh, um, material from local. Okay. So what we're going to engage now, we're going to engage to an extensive training of the locals. Mm -hmm in your brick manufacturing, in your door and in the frame manufacturing and production, so that in the 3,047 houses that are going to be constructed, inclusive houses, government for the RTPs and the other houses, including social apartment and mid-income houses, they are going to source material local. Okay. By doing that, people are going to play a meaningful role into the economy of the project. Other than people being employed and construct houses, mm -hmm. government is going to buy material bricks from your car. Okay. They're going to buy your window frames and door frames. And our people are going to train on financial management, investment and whatnot. That's why that city is a city that is going to benefit the local people. Mm -hmm. and, and how many jobs are you hoping to create through this particular job, uh, project? It is, in, it is in a phase form. Okay. Um, when it's finished, uh, the entire phase is, we envisage to have 15,000 jobs. Okay. But during the construction, remember, you've got the agricultural component. We once went to Poland in 2016. Um, we, were, we were taken to Poland by the then Minister of Rural Development, Minister Kukin and Quint. Okay. The purpose of what we were going to Poland was to deal with the agricultural value chain. That's why in Kosi City, those who are going to benefit in the RTPs are going to, uh, to have what we call one household, one hectare. They are going to have backyard garden on crop productions, and they are going to have the value chain, they are going to produce and, and, and whatnot. And in terms of one of the uh, government outcomes, you speak about issues of food security. So. People are not going to be consumers of the food, they are going to be both producers and consumers. Okay. That will then minimize the cost because food, you know, it's very high cost. Okay, and then when will the construction of this particular city commence? We are waiting for the last strands of getting the title deed. Okay. Because in terms of the law, before you construct a new establishment, there must be a township approval by the municipality. That has been done. Okay. The, the, you, you have to register because the land, remember it's a communal land, it belongs to the Department of Rural Development and Reform. We have to dispose that land. It has been disposed. Today, the register of the deed was informing me that this money has been paid within seven days from Thursday to next week Thursday. They are preparing registration, and in three weeks' time, it means at the end of July, mm -hmm. we'll have the title deed. But already by now, a tripartite agreement has been signed by the Provincial Department of Human Settlement, the city of Mbombela, and the CPA of Mkosi, because the governance structure of that project mm -hmm. is the executive of the CPA, is the total members of the community of Ward 2. And then in terms of the law of land reform, you must elect 11 members. So you've got 11 members, you've got chair, deputy, secretary, deputy, treasurer, and additional members who are the governance structure of the project. They report to parliament through the Minister of Rural Development. That becomes the governance structure. So, so in, 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 in a month time, at the end of July, we might have the, what we call, the title deed. Okay. And then what has happened now, we have applied for pre-feasibility budget of funds, grants from DBSA, 
which is in the process. Just two or three weeks ago, we went to see Mr. Ramakupa, who's, who's heading the Presidential Infrastructure Committee in terms of along with the project. They've since presented the project mm -hmm. and uh, it is being considered. So we expect that at least by next year, February or so, we'll be starting with the first phase because we think we'll have been trained. People must have, because what do, what you don't want to do? Mm -hmm. We don't want people to be employed in the project. We want people to participate into the project for, for maximum beneficiation. Of course, there are those who are going to be employed because not everybody will <coughs> become cooperatives, but others will be employed. Others will be in the mainstream of participation to the value chain of the project. Okay. And MEC, in your speech, you use a strong word, scourge, you know, to describe the problem of land invasion, invasion rather, citing the Greater Mandashi settlement, in Umzama settlement at Tewani South as examples. What must be done by municipalities to nip the scourge in the butt? Municipalities must do their work. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. We've got legislation in the entire country, remember, we have moved, we have moved away from the concept of housing and we went to the concept of human settlement. Mm -hmm. Meaning that if people had to settle in a particular village or if there could be new settlement, there should be an approval by the municipality. No one is allowed to build on a land without the municipality approving the, the building plan. Okay. Now, if municipalities are quiet, they must prove to the Department of Culture, Provincial and National Government that they've got budget of infrastructure for those particular uh, uh, new establishment and we're saying people there criminals are selling land and the municipality must apply the legislation it's simple as that you had a question you asked me a question why in course it has to take more than nine years it is because we had to follow all the legislation pluma sdf township establishment so municipalities can't keep mum it can't be quiet we've got the south africa is not a banana republic mm -hmm. we've got law enforcement agencies and they've got legislation. If people who are selling the land can be arrested and sent to jail, they will be sending a message. So they can't keep quiet. Now, if they don't do that, if they don't have the budget and they, they need the people, what is going to happen? People are going to interfere with the infrastructure. I will make one practical example. Mm -hmm. People of Ntsikazi, people of Tekwan and Ntsikazi, Pinari, Kapowin, they are drinking from uh, a reservoir called Zweni in Pinari. Now, when I was still a uh, councillor then, uh, there was an agreement that we need to offload because the, the area is expanded. Okay. We have to, that's why there's a new development, we call it Ntsigazi Pipeline. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is from Nkwenye, it goes up, it will relieve Tewane from the area of Pinar and it will take, so that Gapogwin Hospital should concentrate from the bulk pipe where it is drinking now, the already existing pipe. Okay. Now, if you keep quiet, the people who are invading the land, they are going to illegally connect to the pipe. And then now we have missed the opportunity and the point of addressing the plight of the poor people who are law-abiding citizens. So we are saying in terms of the constitution, municipalities must provide basic infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Now, they can't keep quiet when these things are happening. They must go there, apply for court interdict. And, uh, don't you think that the reason they are quiet is because they're also implicated? Well, I don't, I don't know, but I'm told that there are officials okay. of government that uh, are doing that. What, what we're going to help them to do, they are going to identify those officials. If those officials are working within the municipality, they should be charged. Okay. If they're working in provincial government, they're going to check because of corporate governments in which departments, they, they, they must face the might full of the law. If they are for national government, we are told that in Kwete Mantashe, there is an official who is a, who's a, um, a correctional officer. We are since investigating that. I have spoken to the office of the minister. To say minister were informed, should you get that that official is participating, will not hesitate to write to the minister for investigation and open a case against that official. Mm. And MEC, since you took over the position as MEC for Copta, you have never said a word to speak out against the corruption and further instituted Section 106 probes in three municipalities. That's Dr. Pixley Sagaseme, Dr. J.S. Moroka, as well as Ikaben Beki Municipality. What progress has been made in relation to these investigations? Look, the sixth administration under the leadership of uh, Honorable Premier Mamtsui uh, Tsipan. Even today, in her budget policy speech, she indicated that 
as a provincial administration, we are going to fight mm -hmm. against corruption. So in an endeavor to do that, we whistle blowers approach us and in, at some point when we are doing our work, because remember in terms of the law, in terms of the constitution, municipalities must support, I mean, COP10, the province must support municipalities to ensure that they do their work effectively and efficiently. So in the course of doing work, when we identify foul play, we don't hesitate to investigate. So far we have investigated four municipalities, not three. Mm -hmm. uh, in the fifth administration, the Kwa municipalities was, was investigated. Yesterday we the cabinet, we are going to present a report by the end of next week to the municipality on the findings of section 106 1P, forensic audit. Okay. We've got three that we've started this year, but because of COVID challenges, it has to be delayed. Uh, two or three weeks ago, uh, they've submitted the findings, and we've since went through the findings. On Wednesday next week, there's a cabinet who are presenting the findings, and after that meeting immediately, we are convening municipalities to present over the findings of that municipalities and our own to ensure that implementation take place. And, and Copter gives hopes about the electricity challenges in municipalities where communities are up in arms due to illegal connections, for example, Epetal, Esakile, as well as Emalatlene. You also spoke about the district um, development model approach to resolve this problem. Yes. Um, Previous the government was working in silos. Mm. National government was spending on its own, provincial government was spending on its own, parastatals were spending on their own and whatnot, and the local government were planning. So the president pronounced that now we must plan in a coordinated way, in a coordinated manner, and it defined that as development district model mm -hmm. or district development model. What does it mean? It means now we're going to have one plan in a particular district. Mm -hmm. A district mayor will then now say, my district, if it is held Tlanzen on Kangala, my district is having a budget of 57 billion, for argument's sake. And she or he will then entail what does it entail in that. He will then explain what does it entail in the, in the budget. She or he will indicate that I've got so many schools that I'm going to build in these municipalities, so many hospitals, so that you understand that we've got one plan to deliver services. Now, in terms of the electricity, You've got high depth um, of municipalities owing ISCO. Mm -hmm. We've, we came very close to the, to the challenge and we've been, we, we are trying to help. All what we're doing was saying district mayors and district leadership must coordinate their municipalities. Last week we were at um, Hertzban, the region. There was a problem at Likwa, problem at Coven and Pegan and Suga Likwa. And we have since resolved one at Suga Likwa. Mayors are reporting weekly. The, the problem that you had uh, in, in municipalities is that number one, people are connecting legal, mm -hmm. illegal, because of this thing of land invasion, as we've, in the, as we've indicated. But secondly, municipalities themselves are not reinforcing money that were collected for electricity, meaning that if there are customers that are paying electricity and you collect maybe 16 million mm -hmm. from people who are using electricity, we are saying that money must ring fence for electricity purposes only. But what we found is that in other areas, municipalities will then utilize the money for electricity for other operational activities in their, in their institution. So we are saying no, it has, it has come to, it must come to an end. Okay. But the other, the other problem is that, uh, of course, um, um, areas has expanded. Mm -hmm. uh, and municipalities acknowledge, I mean, ESCOM has acknowledged that, acknowledge, ESCOM is, 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 is in party with us. South African local government is together with us and all the municipalities. Uh, the week after that, we are taking municipalities in the and in Bombela and Tabatil to try to find a solution to address the problem. Mm. And MEC, do you think that this COVID-19 pandemic presents an opportunity to municipalities to restore its trust in Pagatini? And I'm saying this because, you know, before COVID-19, there were so many service delivery protests, particularly at Babatin. Even today, as I'm, as I'm speaking to you, um, various associations, Elipo, I know they're taking the municipality to court, Nienda Baye, Service Delivery, Epetal, there's also an association that is taking the municipality to court because of is issues of service delivery. Yes, of course, the issue of uh, COVID-19 has provided ourselves with an opportunity to do an assessment. Because remember, COVID-19 
uh, allows us to talk to our people almost with, 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 with our people almost every day. Mm. And as we do so, as we do good, go to their houses, as we, we give them food parcels, we then realize the plight of their situation. Mm. So of course, COVID-19 has provided that particular opportunity. But you see, this thing of uh, people taking municipalities to court is within their constitutional right. But at, at times, it's, uh, it's mischievous. I will make one but example. But don't you think that's their last resort? Because I'm sure they, might have, they must have tried to engage in a masala before taking this particular route. Well, but there's copter. We're always available. Okay. The investigations that has taken place is because people blew whistle to us mm -hmm. and we have acted. So if there's any other formation or persons who are not finding joy with municipalities, mm -hmm. our offices are open. And we're there to facilitate and find out. As, as I've said to you, last week there were problems. ISCOM was taking the court to court, was taking government pay. Mm -hmm. But after we brought them to table, we found, we found in one table, we found an amicable solution. So we encourage our people to, to talk to us to try and find solutions before they resort to courts. Because courts are very embargoed, uh, they talk long processes, but we can resolve in an hour problems and try to render some. Okay. And MEC, you made a commitment last year that Amakosi will be provided with new vehicles. Today you confirmed that the vehicles were handed over to them as tools of trade for them to use in the fight against COVID-19 and gender-based violence. Yes, um, we, we tried to say at the city administration that we have given them the tools of trade. And uh, you can even speak to the provincial chair, national chair, they, they are very excited. We are saying that as a department, we are taking uh, our traditional leadership very serious. Okay. That's why within our limited resources and budget, we'll try our level best to figure that. Yes, indeed, we have given them their, their cuts of their choices. Okay. Just in closing, can you just paint a picture of the current state of municipalities in Bumana? Well, uh, generally, you've got a problem of high debt of electricity. You, you, you know that all the time, this government say we're switching off. Mm. We're switching off. And that created problem. So that's the first problem that we're on top of it. As I've said, we're done with having to ban the region for coming to Mumbai. But the other challenges of our municipalities in the province was the challenge of planning. Mm -hmm. That's why the premier pronounced in the least and the last state of province address that uh, uh, COCTA is assigned. And together with TBSA, who are in the finalization of dealing with the PMU in the province. That, what, what does that mean? It means that we're going to help off all, all our municipalities in planning properly so that you will know where you, if, if you are in your studio, mm -hmm. you must know that in Victor Kanye, where the, country, the municipality is growing to, where will be social activities, where will be schools and whatnot and so forth. The main challenges in relation to our municipalities are the issue of planning. But our municipalities are not adequately supported in terms of finances. We have to do what we call the reforms in terms of the budget that is given to our municipalities. It's minimum and their task is too much. So we are going to try and get with national government to come to that space. But we are saying, with what they are having, they must utilize it properly and correct. We are not going to tolerate any act of maladministration and corruption in the province. MEC, thank you so much for making time to speak to us. Thank you very much.